In this lecture, we are going to extend our analysis of uh, Koopman operator approach to dynamical systems, to nonlinear systems. But uh, the first class that we're going to uh, talk about are systems that have an equilibrium, equilibrium as, as the only special solution. And then uh, we're going to see what the spectral theory can say uh, for such systems. And then the particular tool we are going to use is that of, of conjugacy. So we developed a pretty full theory of linear systems in the, in the previous lectures. And uh, the idea here is going to be to take a nonlinear system, map it to a linear system, prove that certain spectral objects are either preserved or, um, or uh, mapped in a, in, a, in a systematic way to spectral objects of the linear system, and then port those kinds of objects back in order to understand uh, the, the nonlinear system. And the types of tools that we can utilize in this context um, are the classical theorems, for example, the Hartmann-Grobman theorem, or uh, that, that tells you something about um, the conditions under which a nonlinear system close to an equilibrium resembles or can be mapped into a linear system. Another such tool is, is Poincaré linearization theorem. So we'll discuss these. And then uh, as we go on, we'll define the notion of principal eigenfunctions. Uh, if you recall from the previous lectures on linear systems, principal eigenfunctions there were eigenfunctions associated with the eigenvalues of the, of the <clears throat> matrix of, uh, of the system. Um, here, it's going to be a similar idea. There are going to be eigenfunctions associated with eigenvalues that correspond to the linearization around the fixed point. And then we're going to, for the first time, introduce some tools like time averaging along, along trajectories to see that they correspond to certain spectral, spectral aspects of the theory. Now, an important part of this set of, uh, of, of lectures is going to be the introduction of stability theory in the context of Koopman, Koopman operators. So classical stability theory is either linear stability theory, a linear system stability theory that is spectral. So where you can say something about stability looking at the eigenvalues of the system matrix, or a, um, in the nonlinear case, uh, for example, Lyapunov theory that deals with construction of Lyapunov functions. Uh, we're going to see that the Koopman operator theory in some sense bridges the gap and dichotomy between, between these two and can say something about stability of nonlinear systems with equilibria, but also we'll extend this a little bit later to general systems with, uh, uh, with a, quite a general class of attractors. Uh, finally, we discuss stable, unstable center subspaces. In the linear case here, we are going to study the associated concepts of stable, unstable, and center manifolds. So let's begin by recalling the concept of linearizations <coughs> of dynamical systems. So we're going to uh, look at the dynamical system x dot is equal to f of x in some uh, open region, uh, which is a subset of Rn. So we're in an n-dimensional space. And uh, we're going to split this vector field f as a, into a linear part, ax. So this a is the gradient of the vector field at the equilibrium. And we assume the equilibrium is at x is equal to 0, but of course it could be anywhere. We could just do a transformation of coordinates basically a shift, a translation, to consider the, the coordinate system um, um, that is centered at the equilibrium point. And so this first part here is linear, Ax. Uh, A corresponds to linearization at the equilibrium. And then V is obtained, obviously, as just F minus Ax. Uh, ST of X is the flow 
on this system. And then the equilibrium itself is going to assume to have uh, a basin of attraction um, B such that, which is, such, which is a set of points X, such that when time goes to infinity, the flow starting from X, which is element of D, and goes to zero um, as time goes to infinity. So that's the notion of the basin, basin of attraction of a fixed point. So the first idea of linearization that we're going to be studying is the Poincaré linearization, but let me give you kind of a general, uh, general strategy here. So we have some nonlinear system, that is stable and has these curved trajectories. This point that I'm drawing right now is uh, the equilibrium. And we're assuming that, of course, in its basin of attraction, the equilibrium point is stable. So it looks something like this. And so the linearization theorems essentially state that there is a neighborhood of the equilibrium point, such that within that neighborhood, we can map the system to a much simpler linear system. Such that trajectories are mapped into trajectories and importantly, the time properties of the, of the of the system are, um, are preserved because what we are going to show is that the system gets mapped into a linear system that obeys y dot is equal. So y dot, so this is a new coordinate, is equal to a y and a is that linearization matrix that, that we just discussed. So there are some uh, <clears throat> conditions under which this can be done. Um, in the case, for example, of analytic vector fields. So for F, the vector field itself being analytic just means that I can expand it into its Taylor series um, everywhere. And so here's the, here's the definition of what we call a resonance of eigenvalues. So we're going to uh, label by lambda one to lambda n the eigenvalues of the linearization at the equilibrium point. And we are going to say that the F, in other words, the matrix A is uh, resonant, provided there are non-negative integers, m1, m2 to mn, and S, which is an integer uh, between one and n, such that the sum k is equal one to n m k. This integer is bigger than or equal than two. I'll tell you why this condition in a second. And then none of the eigenvalues, lambda s, can be expressed as a sum from k is equal one to n of m k lambda k. Um, the reason why this condition is there is that it's easy to see that the right-hand side has lambda s in it. And so I could just put ms to be one and I would satisfy this inequality. So in order to avoid that, um, we have this condition, but basically what we're saying is that none of the eigenvalues can be expressed as a linear combination of the integers of the other eigenvalues. And so that's, the condition under which we would call a, a resonant matrix. If uh, these conditions are not satisfied, we call that matrix non-resonant. <clears throat> and in that case, we have the, the famous Poincaré linearization theorem that we're not going to prove, but just state because we are going to use it as a tool um, that says, suppose that F is analytic, F of zero is equal to zero. In other words, we have equilibrium at zero and all the eigenvalues of df at zero are non-resonant. 
And either they all lie in the left open half plane or lie in the open right half plane of the complex plane. So all the eigenvalues are all the eigenvalues are in the complex plane. So I'm plotting the complex plane with the imaginary part, oops, the real part here. So the real part in this axis, and then the imaginary parts on the vertical axis. And so what we're requiring is that all eigenvalues are either in the left half plane or in the right half plane. And in that case, there is an analytic change of variables, y is equal to h of x, such that y dot is a y in a small neighborhood of the fixed points. So this is valid in a small neighborhood of the fixed points. So I'm mapping this small neighborhood in a Poincaré theorem into that small neighborhood. And so while the, 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 the equation of motion here is x dot is equal to f, the equation of motion here is y dot is equal to a y, but remember, a is just the linearization of f. And therefore, by this mapping, in some sense, the asymptotic time properties of the solution are preserved. In other words, a nonlinear system over a long time behaves like e to the a t, right? That's the linearization. Uh, and so does this one. So you see the time properties of the solutions. So this is e to the a t plus some remainder here for the nonlinear system. And for the linear system, we have just e to the a t, and this remainder goes to zero as time goes to infinity. So the two systems behave in the same way as time goes to infinity, uh, and the trajectories are mapped into, into each other. That's the essence of all the linearization theorems out there. And the Poincaré theorem in itself um, requires quite a bit. It requires a non-resonance condition. It also requires um, strong smoothness in, in specifically analyticity uh, of the underlying vector field. Now, there are um, results that require less. So the Hartmann-Grobman type linearizations um, um, require much less smoothness and don't have any resonance conditions associated with them. So this is the Hartmann, Hartmann version, but what we're going to do, what, what you're seeing is the Hartmann version of the theorem, but what we're going to do is we're going to state it in the language of Koopman op operator theory. This is not how it was originally stated, but in essence, you will see that it's, it's really a statement that depends on the operator evolution. And that's kind of interesting, interesting itself. So the theorem says the following, uh, let X dot is equal to F of X and F is twice differentiable on our domain, open domain <coughs> of definition. Um, then f of zero is zero, so that's just equilibrium is zero. And ut is the Koopman family of operators of this dynamical system. Now, if all of the eigenvalues of the matrix A, which is the linearization of the system at zero, have non-zero real part, then there is a C1 diffeomorphism H tilde of a neighborhood N of x is equal to zero onto an open set V containing the origin, such that for each X element of N of this neighborhood, there is an open interval I of X subset of R containing zero, such that for all X in the neighborhood N, this is um, um, points in the, in the neighborhood of the, of the equilibrium point or fixed point, and the times t in this interval i of x, the following is valid. Uh, h tilde composed with the flow is e to the at, which is the flow of a linear system, 
y dot is a y, h tilde of x. So there is this mapping. What is claimed is that there is this mapping h tilde such that on the time interval a of x, b of x, this is satisfied. And that's, that's the classical condition. But we immediately observe classical condition of, of Hartmann. But, uh, but immediately we observe that H tilde composed with ST is really the action of the Koopman operator on that mapping H tilde by definition, because this is a composition of a vector of observables with the flow itself. Okay, so let me make a couple of remarks. Why uh, this finite time period over which this is valid? Well, if we have something like a saddle point, we have something like a saddle point, then the most we can hope for is that the nonlinear system with the saddle point is going to be mapped to a linear system with a saddle point inside some neighborhood. And remember, this is a neighborhood N, this neighborhood N in the theorem. And so as you can see, every trajectory is going to enter that neighborhood N and then at some later time exit. And so A and B are associated with these entry time and exit times, and that's why it's finite. Now, if we actually have a stable <clears throat> fixed point, so if we have eigenvalues of df at zero have negative real parts, then that interval starts with some finite time and then it's extended uh, to time infinity. If we have uh, positive real parts, then the uh, time is extended from minus infinity to b. So in, in that case, um, 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 in that case, the trajectory is converged to the zero equilibrium in uh, negative time. So that's the Hartmann, um, Hartmann linearization theorem. And as I said, it's valid in the small neighborhood of an equi equilibrium point. And it, as we observed that the left-hand side of this inequality here, so this is really just the action of the Koopman operator of H tilde. We are reminded of the uh, definition of eigenfunctions. So now we have a scalar function that satisfies this, e to the lambda t phi. And observing the similarity between these two, we could call A an Eigen matrix. So we call this lambda, which is a scalar, an eigenvalue. We could call A an Eigen matrix of, of uh, the, the, Koopman, the Koopman operator um, itself. And once again, note that this relationship is, is valid locally. Uh, well, this relationship here, we'd usually like to have it defined globally, at least in the basin of attraction of the fixed point, uh, if, if a fixed point is stable, for example. Um, so we'll, we'll examine the cases in which um, that can be achieved. So let's proceed from this equation here and do a little bit more work to show you the relationship between this H tilde <clears throat> and eigenfunctions of this Koopman operator. So uh, we're going to diagonalize, we're going to assume A has distinct real eigenvalues, and then we're going to diagonalize uh, A into lambda, the matrix that has only um, diagonal entries. And we're going to use a linear transformation V to do that. 
And then just changing coordinates by saying z is v inverse y, we obtain, just differentiating z dot is v inverse y dot. Now y dot is a y, but y itself is v z. So we get a v z here. And V inverse AV is precisely the diagonal matrix lambda. So we get Z dot is lambda Z. Nice. We got from the original system, X dot is equal to F of X. Then we got Y dot is AY, but Y was some um, arbitrary matrix having distinct real eigenvalues. But now we transform this into a set of coordinates Z that um, satisfy this um, linear system equation with the diagonal matrix lambda. So now uh, let's use V inverse here on the original equation, this one, 3.3. .3. So we're going to hit this from the left with V inverse. So let's do that. So that gives us V inverse H tilde composed with a flow at some point x0 is v inverse e to the at, because our original equation was h tilde composed with st is e to the at h tilde. So v inverse here. <clears throat> now, um, further, we are going to insert here the most useful tool uh, in mathematics is uh, inserting identity somewhere. So uh, we're going to insert identity. V, v inverse is identity. And now we see that here we have V inverse E to the AT V. And since V diagonalizes A, then V also diagonalizes E to the AT, in particular that whole first part here is equal to e to the lambda t. Then v inverse h tilde, we're going to call k tilde. And now let's write it. So v inverse h tilde is k tilde, composed with st is equal to, this term here is e to the lambda t, and v inverse h tilde is k tilde. So look at this relationship. K tilde composed with ST is e to the lambda T K tilde X zero. If you write out any individual component, for example, some K uh, tilde J, this is the J component of this vector of functions composed with ST, right, is equal to, this is a diagonal matrix, so that's going to be E, and its jth element on the diagonal is lambda j, e to the lambda j, so this is e to the lambda j t, and then k j, right? So that means that kj tilde is really an eigenfunction because this is just ut. So ut uh, kj tilde. This is ut kj tilde. So this equation here tells you that kj tilde is an eigenfunction of the Koopman operator ut at eigenvalue lambda j. And so every element of this vector k tilde is actually an eigenfunction. So interestingly, the Hartmann-Grobman type theorems lead us to eigenfunctions local, let's say, in, in some neighborhood of zero eigenfunctions of the Koopman operator itself by this change of change of change of coordinates, note that k tilde is a function. Once you know h tilde, vector of functions. So once you know the vector of functions h tilde, then you hit it with v inverse, 
and you get k tilde and that k tilde is an eigenfunction. So that's a nice relationship between classical local um, linearization theorems um, and also the proof that x dot is equal to f of x is actually conjugate to a diagonal linear system. And the conjugation goes through a set of functions, k tilde, whose components are Koopman, uh, Koopman eigenfunctions of the, of the system. So now, one can extend this uh, local theorem for stable equilibria. So I gave you an example for, uh, for fixed points, but uh, for fixed points that are, for example, saddles. So those are not stable. But for stable equilibria, we can extend this result to a global one inside the whole basin of attraction. So uh, if we consider the same system that we had uh, that we had before, which is uh, x dot, and we write it in the form x dot is equal to ax plus v. So v of x is the nonlinear part. Then um, let's assume that um, uh, v of x is twice differentiable, just like we did in, in, in the previous version of the Hartmann theorem. <clears throat> we assume that A is an n by n Hurwitz matrix. In, in other words, all the eigenvalues have negative real part. So x is equal to zero is exponentially stable. And then let B be the basin of attraction of the equilibrium point. Then there is an H. So remember earlier I had H tilde, local H tilde. And H is once differentiable and it's a map from the basin of attraction to Rn, such that Y is equal to H of X is a C1 diffeomorphism with DH is equal to identity in B and it satisfies Y dot is equal to AY. So uh, this part carries over from Hartmann uh, theorem. In fact, this part is the, sa is, is the same as before. What we, the, the new thing that we are claiming is that the mapping is not just from the small neighborhood, but from the whole basin, basin of attraction. And so in the whole basin of attraction, if you follow the previous local argument, now this would give us an indication that we can find Koopman eigenfunctions associated with these lin linear eigenvalues, lambda j, the eigenvalues corresponding to the linear part, um, we, we would guess that we are getting Koopman eigenfunctions from this, uh, from this calculation. And indeed, so I'm going to give you um, uh, a, a proof um, um, in a kind of a pictorial way, and then we'll go through the, through the, a formal um, uh, proof uh, using these equations up here. But here is what the gist of the proof is. So we'd like to uh, linearize some system over here on the left. And what we know is that it is linearizable because we have the same conditions as in the Hartmann theorem. It's linearizable in this local neighborhood over here. And that linear and that mapping from this local neighborhood to to um, um, to a small neighborhood around origin that these neighborhoods are depicted by gray. Um, that mapping is H tilde. And so here is here is what we do. Uh, in order to construct the global mapping, H. We're going to go from X to the point inside this local neighborhood where H tilde is valid. We're going to then map with the H tilde that we know from the previous Hartmann theorem. And then we're going to map backwards with linear backwards flow that we know this system would have to 
obey. And that's how we are going to get this H. Okay, so here are some details of why this is, why this is possible. So first of all, uh, we, we want to find a manifold diffeomorphic to a sphere. In, in 2D, this is just something that looks like, looks like topologically like that, right? Of dimension n minus one. So uh, since we know the flow inside this small neighborhood, if we can reach the neighborhood itself, we're going to reach the point on that, on that manifold. And when we do that at some time t of x, now we can map with h tilde. So there is a unique time for any x in the Bayesian attraction at which we're going to reach this point over here inside the local, the local neighborhood. And uh, i of x is going to denote the point of intersection of that manifold with that particular trajectory that emanates from, from x. So now I'm going to use what I just described. So h of x is going to be obtained by starting from x, going for time t of x, uh, taking h tilde to cross over to a linear system, and then mapping it backwards with a linear system evolution, which for negative time is e to the minus a t of x, the same time that I used to go forward. The time from here to here is going to be the same as the backward time from here to here. And so <clears throat> this, in fact, this particular mapping h is the required conjugacy. So, uh, so in order to prove conjugacy, let's do the following. Let's compose h, which is defined like this, with s tau. When I do that, uh, I replace x with s tau x in this formula. So if I replace x with s tau x, and this part here, I get t of x minus tau. Why is that? Because I flew x forward by time tau, and that means that the time for it to reach i of x is going to be t of x minus tau. T of x was the time to reach i of x from here. If I go forward by time tau, it's going to be t of x minus tau. And then inside h tilde, there is s t of x. And again, the same story. Now that's going to be replaced as t of x minus tau. And the argument here x is going to be s tau of x. All right. So when we sort this out, we get e to the a tau that comes from here and here, minus and minus the us plus, e to the minus a t of x, h tilde, now we have s to t of x minus tau, s tau of x, so that's s t of x, s minus tau, s tau of x, s minus tau and s tau give you identity, s t of x stays, And so this is e to the minus a t of x, h tilde, s t of x, x. But if you look back here, that's precisely this part here is precisely h of x, this. So we get h of s tau x is e to the a tau h of x. So that's precisely the relationship that we wanted. If you look back, we had a relationship like this, exactly the same in the local case, but now this H is in fact a global quantity. So that's the proof. There are some um, aspects of the proof that I'll just say another word here. Um, this manifold here, actually does exist. And that's the notion of the converse Lyapunov theorem. So basically around every equilibrium, the Lyapunov theory tells you that uh, you can prove the stability of equilibrium. We find a function such that its contours um, are, are closed manifolds, uh, nested closed manifolds around the equilibrium. The converse is also true. If, you, if one has a stable equilibrium, there is a function 
that has closed contours and therefore one of those closed uh, contours or closed level sets is going to be um, the, the level set that we choose. So that's called the converse the Apunov theorem. And so that gives us the ability to talk about global Koopman eigenfunctions inside the whole basin of attraction, but we use the construction that that utilized um, <clears throat> that utilized uh, local theorems. So in this particular case, the Hartman Hartman theorem. So so now we're going to talk about a more general case. What, what the linearization theorems provide us is basically what is called the conjugacy. We studied conjugacy in linear systems, um, but the linearization theorems really are conjugation theorems. They, they say that a nonlinear system around an equilibrium that is, for example, stable, and the, the, the dynamics is conjugate to a linear system um, with an equilibrium that is also stable. So a good question is, and we found that, um, that in fact, the elements of that conjugacy um, are Koopman eigenfunctions. So a good question to ask is, suppose that I know that there is a conjugacy between two different systems, not necessarily linear, just general. Um, how do Koopman eigenfunctions transform, or how do spectral properties in general transform under, under that conjugacy? <clears throat> so uh, we need to define the conjugacy a little bit more generally than we did in the linear case, but the, the, the intuitive notion is going to be is going to be the same. And uh, and we're going to define a notion that is beyond the notions of conjugacy and semi-conjugacy that we defined before. In fact, we're going to define something that, that we call a factor conjugacy coming, coming more from um, a, measure theoretic, uh, a measure theoretic angle. So uh, let's assume that ST is a flow of X dot is F of X and UTS is the family of Koopman operators. And uh, X is the element of Rn, and uh, TT and UTT are elements of Y dot is equal to G of Y, Y element of Rm, and M is less than or equal than N. So um, assume that phi of Y is an eigenfunction of this system over here the Y system and let H be a mapping such that H of STX is TT H of X. In other words, these two dynamical systems are conjugate. Then let's do a calculation. So phi of A, phi of Y is an eigenfunction. Uh, let's uh, call uh, the eigenvalue associated with it is lambda. So we'll write e to the lambda t phi of y. So uh, by definition of y, e, that's e to the lambda t phi composed with h. So h is our factor conjugacy. And so that's equal to phi t t h of x, right? So that's just, that's just uh, this relationship here. But this TT H of X is equal to phi of H S T X. And then in, in turn, this is equal to U T S phi composed with H of X because, uh, because uh, phi of H of S T X is just UTS, the action of the Koopman operator on phi composed with H. So the sequence of arguments is this here is the eigenfunction, is the eigenfunction of the Koopman operator associated with this system. That means that e to the lambda t phi composed with H. 
that in turns means because it's, it's that system, this, this relationship here, or, or rather this expression here comes in. So that's the flow of the second system. By conjugacy, that's equal to this. And then we observe that that's the Koopman operator acting on composition of phi and H. And so what do we have? UTS, that's the Koopman, uh, Koopman family associated with X system. Phi OH is E to the lambda T phi OH. So if you take this and this, you see that phi composed with H is in fact an eigenfunction of UTS provided that phi is an eigenfunction of UTT. Okay, so the Koopman eigenfunctions uh, transform uh, using composition with the conjugacy. And note that the eigenvalue stays the same. That's a very general, very general statement. The spectrum itself is going to be uh, the spectrum of two uh, dynamical systems is going to stay the same. It's actually an invariant under under conjugacy, and that's very nice because if you if you're measuring a system with various different measurements uh, and you're observing the same spectrum, uh, that means you're looking at the same system, <clears throat> just with different measurement 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 uh, tools. So um, if, if you're looking for the classical topological conjugacy, that's obtained when the dimensions M and N are the same. So the dimensions of two systems are the same. And H is a, is a homeomorphism, which is a continuous invertible map whose inverse is also continuous. If the mapping H is a CK diffeomorphism, then we say we have a CK diffeomorphic uh, conjugacy. And so this factor conjugacy, you know, it's, 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 it's the idea that, the dimension itself is uh, is uh, is much smaller, and that includes the previously defined semi-conjugacy, but it doesn't it doesn't really specify the smoothness uh, the smoothness here. So um, if if you wanted additional additional levels of um, of smoothness. Uh, you would go to notions of, let's say, uh, either continuity in topological conjugacy or semi-conjugacy with certain degree, degree of smoothness. <clears throat> All right. Then uh, we can extend this to, uh, to uh, the case of generalized eigenfunctions. So the, 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 the generalized eigenfunctions, as you remember, uh, satisfy um, satisfy uh, this kind of an equation. And after a calculation that is similar to the one that I've described before, right here, we find that the generalized eigenfunctions using the formulas derived before for their time evolution satisfy UTS phi ij, which is the ij generalized eigenfunction composed with h is UTT phi ij h of x, because y is precisely h of x. So again, the generalized eigenfunctions uh, transform, transform using, using uh, the, the conjugacy the conjugacy as well. And so this is the proposition that, that actually combines all these observations. So if we have x dot is equal to f of x, it's flow st and UTS is the family of Koopman operators. And then we have another dynamical system, Y dot is G of Y uh, with uh, flow TT and UTT. In this case, both X and Y are elements uh, of RN. And then H is a C2 diffeomorphism such that H of STX is TT H of X. So the two dynamical systems are C2 diffeomorphic conjugate. If phi is a generalized eigenfunction at lambda of the, 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 the Y system, a Koopman operator family, then phi composed with H is a, a generalized eigenfunction of uh, the X system Koopman operator family at eigenvalue lambda. And this is where we're gonna stop uh, for today. <clears throat>